This is going to be a quick sort of sidebar lesson where we look at the URL path and the URL raw path. So when we looked at this request type, um, we saw that the URL returns this URL type. So if we call request.url, um, this right here, r.url, this returns the URL type. And then we started using this path field. But when we looked at the documentation, we saw that there was both a path and a raw path. So because this can frequently cause some confusion, um, why aren't we using the raw path instead of this? I want to just explain why the raw path exists and also to talk a little bit about URLs and encoding. So in URLs, there are some special characters. For instance, the, um, this hashtag symbol is a way of sort of signifying that there's an ID on the page. So if we were to actually look at the page or the source code for this page, we would see somewhere around here that there's an ID equals to URL. And what is happening here is that when we put this hashtag at the end of our URL, the browser knows that we want to go to that section of the page. So it's kind of like just a way of linking to a section inside of a page. And that's just something that happens by default with browsers. Um, so if we put IDs on different elements inside of our HTML, we can go to them. There's also other special characters such as the, um, let me go ahead and just put one here, uh, the question mark which allows us to provide keys and values. I don't have the server running, so you're not gonna see anything right now. Um, but if you have the question mark, this is a way of telling it that the URL path has actually ended, and we're now providing additional data, um, usually called URL query parameters, which will have keys and values that they're assigned to. And these are just different things that we might need to pass in for some reason. Uh, sometimes it'll be a referral code if you're, you know, have like a mailing list and you send somebody an email and they click a link. Sometimes you'll want the referral code so your page knows where the traffic came from. Um, they can also be all sorts of other things depending on what you're building. For instance, it could even be uh, something like ID equals one, two, three if you're requesting a specific resource or you could put that ID inside the path. Both options are completely possible. Um, so because this question mark has a special meaning, um, we might have a, a certain use case where we have a question mark in for some, an ID or maybe it's a file name or something else, and we want that to actually be part of the path. We don't want it to be, uh, you know, we don't want it to be considered a special character. And what happens here is we have URL encoding. So if you just Google URL encoding, decoding, and then click on one of these tools, um, the second one, this Meyer Web one, is one I've used a lot. And inside of here, you can just type in a question mark and hit encode, and you'll see it gives you a percent three F. So now if I wanted to use this question mark as part of the path, rather than this specific value, we could do that. But I want to show you what's actually coming out of this. So I'm going to go back to our code and I'm going to comment out all of this and what we're about to write is going to be throwaway code, but I want you to probably code along with it. I mean, you don't have to, but I would suggest coding along with it so that you can experiment with it yourself. So we're going to do f print line, uh, and this is the same as f print, but just adds a new line at the end of it. And then we're going to do r.url.path, and then I'll do um, r.url.rawpath. So we're going to print out both of these, but I should mention that raw path is only set in certain cases, which we'll get into here in a second. But we are going to print it out every time so we can sort of see if it's set or not. So now we're going to go ahead and start the server. And if I refresh and I have this question mark key equals value, you'll see that the path is just a slash. And I can view the page source to really make sure. Um, the path is just a slash, the raw path is an empty string, and it doesn't matter if I put something like dog slash cat here, um, the question mark is never considered part of the path or anything after it. So all of this stuff is just query parameters being passed along. But if I were to change this and put that percent three F, the encoded value that we saw before, and now I hit enter, you'll see that all of this gets considered part of the path now because we use the encoded value. So now it's not interpreting that as a question mark. So all of this is fine, um, and we can just continue using the path for this. Um, the URL type handles all of this for us, and the path is what we want. But a byproduct of the fact that the path, uh, or actually, let me take a step back. The path will always have the decoded value. See how here this is a question mark, not percent three F. So it handles all this for us, it decodes things for us, so we can just treat things as if they were already decoded, which is really nice. But the downside to this, or a byproduct of this, is that slashes inside of a path are not easy to determine whether they were a slash that was originally a slash. So if we go back here, 
you'll see here I have slash dog slash cat. Well, if one of these slashes was an encoded slash, we wouldn't really know the difference because they're all decoded. Um, and I can show you an example of that where if I take a slash here, I encode it, and I've got percent %2f. So if I come back here, you can see that it's printing out um, slash dog slash cat. And if I replace the second slash with that percent %2f and hit enter, this first path value looks exactly the same. But we'll now see that we have a second value here, which is the raw path. And that's because our code is printing both of those out every time. Um, let me zoom in a little bit, because this is kind of hard to see, I believe. So really, the only reason raw path is present is that you need to know if there is a slash, whether it was an encoded slash or something that was actually written in the URL. Well, technically, we probably won't need to for most of the course, but that is the reason the distinction's there. And this raw path is only set on cases where that you know, there is an actual distinction to be made. So if we just have slashes all in there and none of them are encoded, it won't actually set it. Um, and that's just worth keeping in mind so that you understand why it's there. We're not actually going to use the raw path at all throughout this course, but I wanted to show you what it was and that it only gets set sometimes because what I didn't want to happen was people to try to use the raw path and then wonder why it's not working or why routing isn't working because what they really want is this path value. Um, but if you do happen to be in the special scenario where you, know, you need to make this distinction, now you know it's there. Um, I doubt you'll run into it very frequently, but it is there just in case you need it. So from here, I'm actually going to get rid of this code, um, uncomment all this, and go back to where we were because we don't need to keep any of that. It was just um, for illustration purposes and showing you what was going on there.